for joining us. Our presentation is proactive students that strengthen the self-esteem of young people. And I'm accompanied by one of the proactive students. We have, we started based on a problem. The problem started that by local authorities that approached our school to inform us about a social movement. At that, some at that time, they, they commented, the students, that there, were, that there was discrimination, alcohol consumption, drug abuse, and violence. So the students assimilated this news students from different courses, they were really interested in changing that concerning reality. So they discovered that there were no inclusive spaces, that there were, that there were no spaces for art. And they decided to design a different proposal in order to find a place for these young people. So after conducting an analysis, we decided to include these two services, offering the young people and the community creative artistic spaces through art in general and music in particular, and also to promote self-acceptance, self-esteem, empathy, justice, and freedom to strengthen coexistence and social relations. So those are, are our current objectives. Here we can see our history, our background. This started in 2018. We started with a project called Parks That Speak. This is an activity in a park in San Pedro where we rebuilt through with some murals and we designed hodgepods for children. We still have to create a theme park uh, for cell phone use using QR codes. And the message was solidarity. That same year, we had another uh, project called Occupied Libraries in a public hospital. While people attend the hospital, they can borrow a book and they can return it whenever they want. That is why it's called Occupied. Then there is the first musical, The Hunchback of Paris. The message conveyed was equality and respect. The following year, the musical was Dracula, including the metaphor of love. Ignacy will then speak about that. And in 2020, the musical was The Phantom of the Opera. And the key messages were tolerance and empathy. During the pandemic, we had two activities, barter for a clean backyard. This was done together with a rural school. And we decided to clean the backyards and all the elements were taken and the, those that could be recycled were recycled. And in that way, we started implementing barter. At the same time, during the pandemic, we developed a project that is called Prevailing Through Art. We had we carved a centennial tree that was uh, brought, and a neighbor approached 
the school because the, the chipping of that tree caused a conflict. So all the branches were reused and carved with different images that are currently in the local municipality. During the pandemic, we continued our activities that are part of our tradition. This is the, the common house uh, referred to the encyclical. And through different artistic expressions, we included uh, videos and we showed or we celebrated the Day of the Earth. Then in 2022, we had another musical, the last one, of course, before this year's musical, which is called Peter Pan with his family. This is a bigger production, and we use different uh, technological resources, and the students uh, conveyed the message of responsibility. Here we can see when we started, there's a picture of this project called Parks That Speak, together with elementary school students. We decided to get together, of course, other uh, participants from the community were included. And here we can see mosaic used for the benches in the parks. That was the beginning, trying to convey solidarity in one of the main squares in an access to the city. Good morning, first of all. Thank you for inviting us. At the bottom, we can see an image of the first musical in 2018, The Hunchback of Paris. For those of you who are not familiar with uh, Victor Hugo, uh, the musical was um, produced by two uh, Argentinians here. And this is the story of a deformed person. And a pers but this person is capable of having uh, equality and tolerance. So here we wanted to promote the message of equality when faced with adversity. We don't have to to leave people aside because of their disabilities. And thanks to that, we started creating a networks with elementary schools, high schools, the municipality. We created our own online radio where children learn how to produce a radio program at that radio helps us because uh, we can produce the songs and dialogues so that the voice can be clearly heard. Besides, we have created networks with producing companies, companies, and even theaters that are part of this large uh, network in our society. All these projects produce an impact in society. Otherwise, service learning would be meaningless. The impacts can be divided into. Thanks to these projects, we've had an increase in enrollment and 80 by 80 percent. And 50% of these students are children with special uh, disabilities who are welcomed at this, at this uh, art school without the fear of being judged. Besides, there's been an increase by 80% of students who can advance in their studies. There was a large difference between first and second years. 
this project, children work, study in order to approve or pass their subjects, or pass their exams. Secondly, the community accompanies musical uh, theaters and the problems are reflected to through this. And besides the education and community, municipalities, churches, and other institutions, it requests support from our center for holding events or workshops so that children from other institutions can learn and the community can also learn on how these projects are uh, implemented and we can show that it is you don't need to be very highly educated in order to learn a service learning which is at, at everybody's hands the problems shown through the musicals are very clear in our society for example drug abuse violence discrimination and we always want these musicals to move people by opening up the fourth wall. This means that we try to show what we do. We ask people what they felt and how they can change it. They have to realize that perhaps some attitude is wrong and that they can change it. Many children that are still at school help during Carnival, for example, through art by helping to uh, design the uh, disguises and costumes and masks. They saw they prepare for several months uh, for, so that they are ready in Carnival. In 2023, we have three projects. One is mural for the identity or with ceramic. Here, we are creating the mural of the national hero. Then there's a project called a courage recycling where children from June they have been working on the courage with recycling techniques and this year we want to promote the protection of endangered species special Tucan and Jawanete. And finally we've got the message of the Three Musketeers musical, all for one and one for all. This is a very strong phrase in this context we are going through because as we heard in the previous panel, these projects are not done by only one person or one institution. They require the collaboration of lots of people and institutions in order to produce service learning through art. And this is the last slide. Okay, thank you very much to all the people who collaborated, these, all these institutions who helped, supported us to be here today. Thank you, Gleis, and the educational community, and a producer from our community. And thanks to him, we can show you all our productions. And we'd also like to thank Nindia and Lydia from Gleis who supported us and helped us uh, to grow in the implementation of service learning. Thank you. Thank you, Estela. Thank you, Ignacio, for representing everyone involved in each one of the projects. These presentations, uh, and we hope the video too, uh, will be shared through the class uh, web so that we can still learn from all the experiences. Now I would like 
to uh, present Valeria Kruner. She's an architect she, in the School of Architecture, Design, and Urbanism from the University of Buenos Aires. Valeria is a head of a practical work of an interdisciplinary ser a seminar for social urgency. This is a very dear a program for a service learning community. It, it, so it's a pleasure to see how this project is still going on. This program is a program for advanced students of architecture, graphic design, design, clothing design, textile design, industrial design, and for students oh, studying landscape art. Uh, art. Since, since 2010, Valeria coordinates multidisciplinary teams of students who, through social practice within service learning framework, develop interdisciplinary projects as a response to real needs of vulnerable populations. They implement their knowledge and they also participate and collaborate. Thank you. Valeria, you have the floor. Good morning, everyone. I really appreciate these places uh, for where we have to share. It's really nice to get together with people who do similar things to the ones that we do, and to be able to exchange and to learn from others, and also to disseminate what we do, which is very important, especially at this time. As Maria Rosa said, Juan and Estela were the pioneers in implementing service learning in our school. And I dare to say that uh, they, uh, it's really nice to keep on doing what they did. This semester, I will be responsible for a, a assisted professional practice with a social, environmental, and productive orientation. I wanted to share our experience and how we implement service learning in higher education. There's a strong coordination with the academic content our students study architecture or design, and there's a coordination between the studies and the demand of the community. So this ex there are three components generated here, an educational component where we all learn, teachers, students, communities learn. I mean, everybody learns. We learn when we discuss, when we exchange knowledge, when we exchange technical knowledge, because we seek for advice, because we know that to solve actual problems, real problems, we need help, we need alliances, we need resources, and a social component. And uh, there is also a practical intervention component. We want to do things that really remain in the communities. And for that purpose, I mentioned some financing pro uh, programs. People were asking me how we uh, raise funds. Well, after working hard, we decided we found out that there are f that there are financial lines such as UANEC, the outreach projects such as volunteer programs. Oh, there are other programs that support these types of educational initiatives. And using these resources, of course, we are offering benefits. And at the same time, students learn when they put things into practice. They learn very important things that perhaps they wouldn't learn only with the theories, such as fund management, such as financial management, budget, etc. So this is our basic methodology. 
we have students of architecture, industrial design, students from textile design, house design, graphic design, image and sound design, and landscape design. But we are all studies related to architecture and design. And we realized that we need a broader interdisciplines. So we tried to partner from other schools, with INTA, with ACUMAR, depending on the problem that we want to solve, we look for technical uh, advice, because of course we don't know everything and we need to know how to ask for help. With the um, prime of SDGs, we realized we've been working with SDGs for quite too long, but we gave it a framework, an international one, and we realized that at UN wants to implement and promote these SDGs. We realize that we do learning based on projects, real life projects, with all the responsibility that they entail. As Nieves said before, we need to carry out effective solutions. Everything has to score 10. So on these projects, we touch upon two, three, or four goals. And university for us, well, is a fundamental agent in implementing SDGs. And it is a referent for all other sectors in society, uh, public state sectors, the private sector, and the third one, um, social organizations and NGOs. Images speak louder than words. These are the images of our students uh, in FADO. We work in workshops with collaborative ecologies. We have uh, these communities visit FADO. At the closure of the previous quarter, we worked with the civil society, La Barca. They provide support to high school students and the fact that they come down to university to show their house to us and to spark or to start that spark in them of how nice it is to go for a university career deeply moves us. They are always invited to take part in these meetings. These are prototype workshops, lab work. We have some sort of very practical training, but the thing is that training in architecture and design stays on or lingers on simulated cases, but we take a chance and then go for real cases. And we admit to the fact that we sometimes go wrong. That's obviously possible. We, we, we all learn and we all hope that we will come out better for the next time. These are on-site images, field work. Our university students go to places they go on site and they come across highly diverse situations. It is an opportunity for us to bring them together or relate them to problems that exist in professional exercise as well. And this yields cross-sectional learning. It is not just professional learning such as um, communication to staff members, critical analysis, reflection, etc. I will now talk about a few cases. This is one case that we love. It's a fanzine that's called um, Break or Recreation. That happened during the pandemic. Please take note of this page. You can access this and download fanzines. These are playful, didactic magazines that were put together by our graphic design students. And since this happened in pandemic, we were all kind of at the lockdown, and this was a way to come down to, terri to the territory, to places where bags were distributed with um, cleaning, dip, cleaning products and food. Well, they also added those magazines. 
On the bottom of it, we included information on um, safety and self-care uh, in connection to COVID, but then it moved on to dengue and chikungunya and gender violence. We tried to dedicate this to promote public health. Another case, Casa de Galilea, Galilea House in Becker. This happened based on volunteership that we were awarded a prize. This helped us use signage on the facade here. Also brochures in Galilea House again. They work with early stimulation. This is a textile game to stimulate early, to stimulate children early. We did so with the, work, with the interdiscipline, including uh, others that would guide us with children. This is La Barca Association about those children. If you want to go deeper here, you will take a look at the 360 view. You will take a look at um, the view of organizations. We started uh, how we started materializing equipment for a backyard and another one, Chepibe, Hey Dude, in Villa Friorito, where we wanted to create this community uh, crop growing. We uh, focused on good nutrition, good diet. So that is where we started working with the Pro Huerta program. And technicians came along and they said, well, you know, are you planning to have this orchard? But did you know that there's lack of water, there's shortage of water in December? How will you irrigate your crops and so we had to go about it and find a solution to water or lack of water so by working together we created this system to collect rain water from the rooftops so that we can use it during summer and then i will show a video so you can hear teachers and students firsthand I am Fatima. I'm one of the coordinators of the Chepibe Community Kindergarten. In November, it will be 35 years since it was created here in Villa Fiorito. From Chepibe, we have received students from the Buenos Aires University. They started coming down here, and it was kind of uncertain. And I was, I told Enrico, um, at least water tank for water collection, for rain water, and see it materialized today uh, makes me so happy. We carry out lots of projects for the foundation. This is a um, tank project. Uh, we finished the tank, the composting, and the orchard. This is the last day we could irrigate for the first time with rainwater. These are all our crops. This was a very tough quarter, but we always say that when the cost-benefit balance inclines in our favor, well, the, uh, these results clearly show that this is the way to go. It is important to bring architecture and social work together. This is the reason why I'm in this assignment. It is different from what we know in France because we do not have this field back home. We finished this and we worked with kids from the kindergarten. I think it is essential that we have these spaces where we can put into practice our knowledge and have um, this uh, brainstorming in, in contact with the society that we are living in.
Thank you. So we are thankful for, for the fact that you have shared this wealth of an experience and such an inspiring one. Through you, we would like to thank those that participate. Well, this is a polyvalent center in the north of Argentina, then down to the city of Buenos Aires, around the University of Buenos Aires. And we will now cross the river to Uruguay to show the Unit 13 and Victoria Epic, who is Uruguayan. She uh, was trained as a technologist in rehabbing, and she is now studying as a social educator. Since 2014, she's worked in the National Institute for Rehabbing, where she works as an operator. Before, she was part of other areas of the Institute, um, masculine and feminine coexistence, and she's the coordinator of the treatment area. That that reports to the Unit 13 in Uruguay, and Sabrina Ramos is joining her, and she joins the project from CLAIS. Welcome. Thank you. I will get started with this brief intro. I am the institutional responsible of CLAIS in Uruguay. I am in uh, after, after projects in the lockdown, I uh, contacted Victoria. We've been working with her for two years. My training area is topology. I work with the context of being um, locked down for two years. And what about service learning in jails? That's a challenge. That encouraged me into thinking about the role of criminal law and of punishment and the objectives of jails. What's their role? What are they for? And thinking about these goals from the restorative uh, or positive justice how important it is to think about this from this place. So when positioned in this place, and considering how people are deprived from their freedom, uh, they cannot uh, walk freely, but they do have other freedoms because there's rights given to them in, in jails. We have this integrated view as a social and educational project in Unit 13, Las Rosas in Maldonado, in Uruguay. We focused this year on sustainability of life, sustainability and care in the broad sense of the term. So these are corners that we and the entire team in Maldonado were decided to work on in a jail. This is not a minor thing, but it is very rewarding. First off, I come on behalf of a team of human beings working there. I'm representing them, but we are quite a few. The Ministry of the Interior created INR in 2010, and the S figure was necessary in civils and technologists working in jail-related structures. There's this structure with a director and three offices, administrative, operational, and technical. This is the one I work in, and this is in turn divided into big, two big sectors, treatment and approach. Specifically, in connection to Unit 13, it's a mixed uh, unit with um, men and women. It was created in 1988 
the new building was built in 2011 with classification modules. It's important that people should be classified based on their crime and to the progression nature. The population is mostly between 18 and 29 years old. This unit is ranked as mid to high sa in safety or in security. There's 883 people, 78 of, wi of whom are women. As part of the needs, we do have the unit that saw that we had a number of issues. On the other hand, on the side of people who are deprived of their freedom, we realized that they had their own needs. When we saw problems and needs, then our conclusion was that we were talking about the same line. And then we started talking about environment and coexistence. This will result in this project. We gave emphasis to women who are deprived of their freedom. We are having a reform so that women are given a better place where to live, so that they themselves can take a leadership role in that reform. The place is being renovated. When we see this, we realize that the result is to generate more educational proposals hand in hand with agreements with networks and better access to rights. This is a view that we have of this orchard. This has been up and running for a long time. We have a teacher's plan that chooses to take the hours and give continuity. This is the greenhouse, but when the teacher came along, he was given just a plot of land and he started working on it. And now we have big hectares. And whenever Sabrina comes along, we realize how much progress has been made. You cannot see it on a daily basis. You actually don't. But when a visitor comes from abroad, from outside, they do notice uh, the benchmark and the progress the project has made. We have local and national networks for education and for um, occupations. We have the support of Plasticoint and Tachosui. We realized we had to focus on recycling, recycling wastes uh, for better life quality of all. We have agreements with the department uh, in Maldonado with uh, Ceuta, Ceuta, and this talked about the space we have with Aborgama, and we have educational allies. The sector division of youth and adults, Deja and PNEC, they work with us for a long time, and these are educational networks that work on a daily basis with the project with us. We also have a recycling workshop and we realized we needed to generate this composting project to take advantage of the waste generated in the unit. So we would segregate it and put it to better use. We use worms. We see how this is work. These are uh, hats they make. They made 300 of them with um, grass. Uh, they go harvest this grass. They go through the process. They know how the process moves, they leave it on under the sun for it to dry, and they weave it by hand. This helps us create improvements and enhancements. We have lavender as well. We grow lavender, and 
that generates nice uh, smell and feelings. We are about to sign an agreement with MGAP so that women can come and visit the unit and exchange with the local women since we have this grass uh, used or in, uh, for weaving. Inmates in the unit can teach them weave uh, with grass. Part of this orchard, co uh, compost and grass, these, all these projects are integrated, but at the same time, the, these educate the, train the trainers. They, we have this opportunity of training rural women to create these hats, and in exchange, they give a workshop for inmates. We also work with Nenge. They work with who have been released, so when they uh, have their freedom back, we help them so that they can find a job or collaborate in these productive networks. The projects uh, that we've been working on since 2019 uh, are the following, and uh, we realized that uh, we actually just had to give them a name because they were already doing them. We work on the coordination with teachers, on physical spaces. We were able to credit and to uh, grant diplomas. So that it really is very important for people who recover their freedom to have a diploma. These groups are mixed groups, and there are approximately 100 people working on these uh, projects. This is a lot of people. Having this number is a lot. There are also uh, public servants working here. At the same time, the products are sold. So for all the people who get there, uh, public servants, teachers can buy these products. And finally, uh, we realized that they were seeing, witnessing all the process, see, uh, planting, growth, harvesting. So we realized that we had to make donations. So with the protagonists, with the, with the protagonists, we decided that they, we could donate to the schools of their children. So they are very proud to take the donations to the schools of their children or to other units and to local institutions. As we said, the coexistence is strengthening. It helps solve conflicts. These open air spaces are a really very significant. The support we can provide uh, is uh, very important. Uh, their uh, diet is improved, and this, we help them design a plan before they are released from prison. We consider natural goods, developing of capabilities, the creation of new sectors who are more open, where they can access to stars, for example, to see the stars at night. There is a health uh, board where we discuss specific uh, cases and where we uh, work together to make the best decision. Then we've got treatment programs. There are several programs that we, on which we work either individually or in groups. We receive the support of the parliamentary commissioner. We hold delegate meetings uh, every 15 days. And finally, uh, the human rights advocates too. Where we come from, where we have done small activities individually without producing a strong impact, where we are today, 
producing opportunities and changes every day in people who are deprived from their freedom. So what are our projections to consolidate the network of stakeholders, which is essentially necessary to keep on working, generate devices to keep on working on this project, generate opportunities in the of what a deprivation of freedom means. Not only bad things happen there, and it's all, it's really good to be able to make it visible, and uh, us to project ourselves actively in the community. And we want to deepen the work that we're doing with the families. Thank you. And uh, this project, this uh, orchard, for you to have an idea, are three quarters of an hectare. So they are very big. They have started working on that land. And of course, there are several problems. We had water problems, for example. Imagine how difficult this was. Prison. So as a result of the problem, to jointly looking for solutions and able to capture rainfall because the, I mean, in the end, today, these uh, orchards are being watered even if there is a shortage of rainfall. Thank you. Thank you, Victoria for sharing your experience. Now we will uh, move on to peace. And unfortunately, uh, I, won't, I cannot say that they're enjoying peace in Ukraine. So it's very valuable to have Olya Matichuk with us. She's the director of the Center for Teaching and Learning Excellence in the Catholic University of Ukraine. She joined the university in 2017 after having worked worked on the Institute of Kiev in Ukraine, and she has 15 years of professional experience in teaching research in several universities. She's responsible for uh, the program of mobility and academic cooperation and on the implementation of service learning in the institution has participated from different projects in Germany, Belgium, Poland, Finland, Israel, UK, Czech Republic, and the US. She's a member of an NGO, and she is a great cool. Bienvenida, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. First of all, thank you for inviting me for this meaningful event. And I would like to share our experience of implementing service learning at UKU today. Uh, but I would like to start with the, my presentation uh, with the, the sound we hear almost every day uh, for another half and a year. Bueno, muchas gracias por invitarme. Primero quiero compartir experiencias. Bueno, está mostrando el sonido que oyen ellos en Ucrania todos los días, ¿no? Eso es lo que quería compartir con ustedes. Gracias. Pero, bueno, antes decía que quería compartir con ustedes entonces la experiencia en la implementación del aprendizaje de servicio en la Universidad Católica en la actualidad. ¿Mm? Ok, y uh, as you already heard the sound and we hear it uh, uh, every day, it became an inevitable part of our life. Sometimes we have this air, uh, air raid alarms uh, several days, per, uh, several times per day, or at least uh, every week uh, or several times per week. And here is the map of Ukraine. And uh, you, can hear, you can see here uh, the losses of time uh, connected to the air raid alarms. Mm -hmm. Bueno, acabaron de oír entonces el sonido que oímos todos los días en Ucrania. Es parte de nuestra vida. Esto puede pasar varias veces por día, varias veces por semana, días seguidos. Y ahí ven el mapa de Ucrania y hay una referencia, un enlace a las pérdidas de tiempo que sufrimos en Ucrania. So, 
can you imagine uh, during air raid alarms we have to go to the shelters and uh, some people we still study in a way uh, but uh, a lot of people they just can't work and can you imagine how many resources how many hours of work are lost uh, because of what we have now in Ukraine esto se refiere a que no podemos llevar adelante nuestra vida cotidiana, no podemos ir a trabajar, no podemos ir a estudiar. Así que imagínense la cantidad de recursos y la cantidad de trabajo que se pierde por no poder seguir con nuestra rutina. And here on, on this slide now you can see destroyed uh, um, schools and you can also see the numbers of losses uh, of uh, in 150 uh, billion dollars uh, they uh, ruined uh, around 3000 uh, schools uh, or uh, um, educational establishments uh, a lot of houses were uh, also destroyed and uh, that's the losses in in money but Uh, more, uh, uh, what is more important, uh, because the weapons they use, uh, bombing and destroying our houses, cost millions, millions of dollars. Can you imagine if all this money will go for, uh, for education, for uh, uh, health, uh, security, and whatever? So I would like to give you the perspective that uh, this is uh, this war where we losing a lot of money, all of us. And uh, because of it, actually, uh, each of your country will spend now more money for security and for military purposes instead of education, instead of health care, instead of uh, culture. So it's not our war. It's, I mean, like, it's not Ukrainian war. It's the war of the whole world for the future. Bueno, y en esta diapositiva podemos ver las pérdidas también, pero en términos monetarios. Ahí vemos imágenes de escuelas destruidas, ahí ven la cifra de 150 mil millones de dólares que se perdieron en términos de estas mil escuelas que se destruyeron. La guerra destruye nuestras casas, son pérdidas enormes en términos de dinero. Pero lo que es más importante, todo este dinero que se invierte en armas es dinero que no se está invirtiendo en educación, en salud, en seguridad, etc. ¿no? Así que esta es la perspectiva que quería compartir con ustedes de la guerra. Y todo este dinero que estamos perdiendo nosotros, también cada uno de sus países lo está sufriendo, porque ustedes también tienen que gastar más, invertir más en defensa, en gastos militares, en lugar de gastarlo en educación, salud, etc. Así que esta guerra, esta guerra nuestra, no es una guerra de Ucrania, sino que es una guerra del mundo. Ok, um, over here you can see more destroyed uh, schools uh, um, and uh, a lot of people, uh, a lot of students, they will not have an opportunity to go to school on the 1st of September. And just yesterday I got the news that uh, in the Uh, Suma region, which is uh, which borders with Russia, uh, there was a, a raid alarm, and they killed the principal of school and the vice principal, a librarian, who were preparing school for the new school year. Bueno, acá ven más imágenes de escuelas destruidas. Los estudiantes no van a poder iniciar las clases el primero de septiembre, como sería lo, lo normal, y de hecho ayer escuché en las noticias que en la zona que linda con Rusia estaban preparándose para iniciar las clases y hubo una alarma de ataque y la escuela fue destruida y de hecho el director de la escuela que estaba preparando la institución para el inicio de clases eh, terminó muriendo. So, uh, uh, almost 8 million people flee the country. Uh, because of war, and uh, uh, according to the recorded statistics in Europe, it is five million people. It's a lot, a lot of people who uh, left their houses to escape the war. And uh, at least 18 million people need humanitarian aid in Ukraine. Bueno, 8 millones de personas abandonaron el país. Según las estadísticas, también hay 5 millones de personas en toda Europa. Y eh, 18 millones de personas necesitan ayuda humanitaria. 
And of course, civilians were killed from the, the begin a lot of civilians were killed uh, from the beginning of the war, and uh, a lot of children are among them. Today is uh, actually uh, the exact day of uh, one, ha one year and a half of the full-scale invasion. But I would like you to remind that this war lasts for nine years and a half. It's not just one year and a half. And it's a pity of of uh, all of the world and of our solidarity that we couldn't manage to stop it during these eight years before the full-scale invasion. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we'll not be bombed. Our civilians, civilian cities will not be bombed all over Ukraine. Bueno, como sabemos, muchos civiles resultaron muertos durante la guerra, muchos niños. La, la primera invasión a gran escala ocurrió hace un año y medio. Pero de hecho, la guerra empezó mucho antes. Ya llevamos nueve años y medio de guerra, no solamente este último año y medio. Y esto fue, bueno, porque todo el mundo y nosotros también no pudimos detener esos ocho años anteriores de guerra. De otro modo, no hubiéramos perdido tantos civiles como estamos perdiendo. Okay, and uh, in, on June the 6th, this year, the war came the closer to the campus of our university. You remember the map of Ukraine? Our university, I am from Lviv, from western part of Ukraine. We are near the border to Poland. But on the 6th of June, there was a missile attack to Lviv, and actually they destroyed the building which is 500 meters uh, far from the campus, from our campus. And on this image, you can see that building, and uh, uh, in the lower row, you, have, you can see that uh, some of the doors and uh, glass was broken at our university. So thanks to God, we, uh, like, we stayed, but you know, you never know. Bueno, el 6 de junio de este año hubo un ataque muy cerca de nuestra universidad. Recuerdan en el mapa que yo les conté que estábamos al oeste, en el oeste de Ucrania, cerca de la frontera con Polonia. Y el 6 de junio hubo un ataque de misiles que destruyó, ahí ven las imágenes, un edificio que está a solo 500 metros de nuestra universidad. Así que nosotros también sufrimos, bueno, muchos vidrios rotos, algunas puertas destruidas. Gracias a Dios estamos bien, pero bueno, uno nunca sabe. When we hear the air raid alarm, we are thinking about who will be the next. And when the air raid alarm finishes, we think, thanks God, it wasn't me. Cada vez que escuchamos la alarma de ataque aéreo, pensamos quién va a ser el próximo. Y una vez que se termina esa alarma, decimos, bueno, gracias a Dios no fuimos nosotros. Of course, as a university, we had to respond to what was going uh, on in Ukraine or what is what is going on even right now and uh, during the first several uh, several uh, days of uh, full scale invasion in uh, February 2022 uh, we uh, started to like get together and started okay what can we do for the first several days we didn't have uh, any lectures because we even didn't know if Ukraine will exist Uh, but uh, we are really close community. You, we, we are your university is a community, so we all got to campus, and uh, our campus became a logistic center for the humanitarian aid. Bueno, nosotros como universidad tenemos que responder a lo que está sucediendo. Durante los primeros días de la invasión, en febrero de 2022, no, no sabíamos qué hacer, entonces nos empezamos a reunir, los primeros días por supuesto no hubo clases porque ni sabíamos si Ucrania iba a existir, pero nosotros eh, como comunidad nos reunimos en el campus y de hecho ahora nuestro campus es un centro logístico para la distribución de ayuda humanitaria. At the same time, our, our campus became a shelter for internally, uh, internally displaced people and for those who were fleeing to, to the West. 
Uh, so our uh, students of social work, they organized all of this and they started to provide training and, uh, uh, and help kids and uh, people with uh, uh, physical disabilities. So they treated them in, those, uh, in that shelter. In a way, they, uh, they trained uh, uh, what they have to know according the outcomes of their courses and the outcomes of their program being social uh, work students. Eh, nuestro campus se convirtió en un refugio también para los desplazados internos, para los que se iban hacia el oeste del país. Y con nuestros alumnos de trabajo social eh, organizaron capacitaciones para ayudar a los niños, a las personas con discapacidades, para saber cómo manejarse en esas situaciones. Y todo esto forma parte de sus cursos, en estos eh, cursos de trabajo social. Sí, yeah, so maybe we can watch a short video about it. Just Podemos ver un video corto sobre esto. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. That's just uh, how, how it existed, the shelter. It's our former rector, and uh, we can show you how this shelter worked. Es el director explicando cómo funciona el refugio. So thanks for, for the humanitarian aid you sent us from all over the world. We, we are managed to equip uh, this shelter. Gracias a toda la ayuda humanitaria que recibimos de todo el mundo, ahora podemos organizar este refugio. Uh, this is Julia. She she is uh, the manager of the social work uh, uh, program. Yes. So you can see that they all together with uh, their students they provided uh, help for those uh, externally uh, internally uh, displayed people. Ahí se ve la, la administradora de, del programa de trabajo social está explicando cómo los estudiantes ayudaban a los desplazados internos. At the same time, another project was developed by our IT students uh, um, and uh, journalists, um, uh, media students. They uh, elaborated the platform Post to Stop War together uh, because uh, uh, one of the reasons, uh, um, I, I think that one of the reasons uh, uh, for, for not helping Ukrainians for so long time, being in war for, for eight, ye eight years and uh, all the community were more or less silent, I don't know. Uh, so means uh, means that uh, you didn't know the real situation. So in, in a way, Russia managed to fool all, all the world somehow. So they, they realized that we need to have more messages uh, in different languages uh, on what is going on, on the real situation, on what is going on in Ukraine. And they translated first, that platform worked for, translated into 46 languages, but after several, like an, a year, they left like 30 languages. But I would like to say that uh, they, um, uh, they worked with the community, but the community of the whole world. Of course, not any of our students knows uh, so many languages, but they ask their, their friends and people all over the world to help to translate. Mm -hmm. Bueno, y este es otro proyecto, un proyecto de los alumnos de informática y de periodismo. Crearon esta plataforma que es Post to Stop War, como poste, posten para parar la guerra. Eh, y nosotros pensamos que una de las razones por las cuales el mundo no estuvo ayudando a Ucrania durante ocho años y la comunidad estaba silenciosa, era porque el resto del mundo no sabía cuál era la situación en Ucrania. Realmente Rusia de alguna manera había estado engañando al mundo con respecto a lo que estaba pasando realmente. Entonces por eso se desarrollaron más mensajes en muchos idiomas diferentes contando cuál era la situación verdaderamente en Ucrania. Esto se tradujo a... Eh, 16 idiomas, eh, se trabajó con la comunidad de todo el mundo, por supuesto los alumnos no conocen todos estos idiomas, pero siempre conocen a algún amigo de un amigo que habla otro idioma y así fueron creando esta plataforma. So another project which was um, developed with the, uh, international business, within the international business class uh, and global markets uh, was um, uh, to um, 
sent letters to those companies, to CEOs of the uh, international companies, uh, asking them to leave uh, Russia and not to collaborate with it. Because all money they, uh, they earn there and they pay the taxes, they go to, to, to missiles. Otro proyecto en el que trabajaron los alumnos de negocio internacional y mercados globales era eh, conectarse con las empresas internacionales que estaban en Rusia para que abandonaran Rusia, para que no siguieran colaborando con Rusia, porque al tener sus negocios allí y pagar sus impuestos allí, eso, ese dinero se usaba para comprar armamentos. Uh, and of course, before writing a letter to the CEO of such a huge company, you have to make some kind of research on the company to tell it to the company. So in a way, they, uh, they uh, gained uh, the outcomes of the course to learn more about business and about international business. Y por supuesto, antes de escribir las cartas a estas empresas, los alumnos tenían que investigar eh, cada una de estas empresas para adaptar la carta a ellos, ¿no? Y eso forma parte de los resultados del curso, también aprender sobre negocios, aprender sobre cómo funcionaban estas empresas. The next semester in the frame of this course, but with different students, they uh, started to uh, prepare the messages to Wikipedia about the information Uh, uh, putting the information uh, uh, if uh, uh, the company still is still on the market of Ukraine or not. And in such a way, they pressure the company, uh, you know, but, um, uh, but they have to prepare also this information in English and according to, to, to the information about the company. Y eh, también los alumnos eh, preparaban mensajes que después publicaban en Wikipedia, donde decían si esas empresas estaban presentes en Ucrania o no, si seguían en Rusia o no, y de esta manera presionaban a las empresas. Eh, estos mensajes se desarrollaban en inglés, así que ese era también otro de, los, de las actividades que realizaban los alumnos. ¿no? Another project was made by the master degree program uh, pro, uh, students of the um, uh, of the psychology program. They gave uh, the psychological counseling for for those in need, for internally displaced people, for veterans of war, for those who came came back from war. Mm -hmm. Eh, otro proyecto es el de la maestría de psicología. Los alumnos brindaban asesoramiento terapéutico a um, desplazados internos, a veteranos, a todas las personas que lo necesitaban. Yeah, so, um, I don't know, we don't have time. Or <laughs> no, no tenemos mucho más tiempo. A little bit, yeah, so just maybe to, to, to make it shorter. Another project, uh, with, uh, uh, journalist students, they made uh, uh, the research on unknown threats, what Google tells about uh, the war in Ukraine. And it turned out that the narratives are really different to what was going on in Ukraine. Otro proyecto con los alumnos de periodismo es esto que se llama Amenaza Desconocida. ¿Qué nos dice Google sobre la guerra en Ucrania? Y ahí se pudieron ver las diferentes narrativas, cómo lo que se cuenta no es siempre igual que la realidad. Another very meaningful program, project is our law clinic. Uh, it worked before, before the full-scale war started, but after the full-scale invasion, they started to uh, document uh, war crimes, which is really important to, uh, to, to have another Nuremberg for Putin. Y este es otro proyecto, el de la clínica legal, en realidad ya existía antes de la invasión a gran escala, pero después de la invasión empezaron a documentar eh, crímenes de guerra. Así que fue también un elemento muy importante para poner en evidencia a Putin. And here you can see our uh, professor uh, of, uh, uh, of law, she is going with students to document all the crimes. So you, you can see the whole, it was made by missiles. Acá se ve una de las profesoras de Derecho que está documentando esos crímenes de guerra, va con los alumnos, ese gran pozo era un pozo dejado por un so the, the whole Ukraine and I think the whole world is looking for the tribunal for Putin. Así que Ucrania y todo el mundo creo está esperando que se haga un tribunal de guerra contra Putin. But at the same time we should understand that it's not only about Putin, it's also about uh, Russians. Pero, How 
Okay. Eh, pero también tenemos que entender que no se trata solo de Putin, sino que de los rusos en general. How full can you be or what can motivate or who can make you to go and to kill other people? ¿Qué, ¿Qué puede hacer que uno sea tan tonto? ¿Qué puede motivar a uno para salir y matar a otras personas? So for us it is very important uh, that uh, this, this statement never again will never will be never again. Entonces para nosotros es muy importante lo que decimos, ¿no? Eh, que esto no tiene que suceder nunca más. And for this purpose, we have this co-curriculum program and uh, also courses connecting where we, we, we help uh, our students to develop values and to uh, at least to discuss, the pro, uh, to discuss mm -hmm. on these topics. Mm -hmm. Entonces, con este fin, desarrollamos eh, programas curriculares y cursos para ayudar a los estudiantes a hablar sobre estos temas. So we have another project uh, in the frame of one of the courses, the people of Ukraine, where our students, they meet those who, who are fighting for, for them in the front line, who we are volunteering. And through those people, they meet God and they understand uh, uh, what motivates them to behave like that, what would motivate them to be able to sacrifice their own lives for those, for, for ours. Mm -hmm. Y otro proyecto es este, el pueblo de Ucrania, donde los alumnos trabajan con los que están en la primera línea, con los voluntarios que van a luchar para ver qué es lo que los motiva para eh, sacrificar sus vidas, para sacrificar sus vidas por nosotros. So for us, uh, uh, the name of this project, uh, Small Stories of the uh, Big War. And for us, it is really important to meet those who are still alive and to memorize them while they are alive, because we really losing our friends every day. Y este es un proyecto que se llama Pequeñas Historias de la Gran Guerra, donde queremos eh, dar testimonios de aquellos que están vivos, que todavía están vivos, porque de hecho eh, perdemos amigos todos los días. Yeah, so I would like to say uh, the story of our uh, former student. He was a stu historian. He, uh, he was, you know, sometimes you meet people full of life and so joyful, so, uh, so always um, happy and willing to help, whatever. And he was one of them. And he was killed a year, uh, last year he was killed on this war. A veces uno eh, conoce estudiantes que, son, que están llenos de vida, que son muy entusiastas, que participan ayudando permanentemente y lamentablemente este era uno de los estudiantes que falleció durante la guerra. And uh, here I would like just uh, uh, for, 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 for 30 seconds to hear the lullaby song his mom sang to, to him for the last time. Vamos a escuchar ahora a su mamá que le habla a él por última vez. Antes decía que él era una persona llena de vida, siempre feliz y siempre dispuesto a ayudar. Y aquí es cuando le canta por última vez la canción de cuna. Of course, it was on the funeral, and there's the grave of Artem. His name was Artem, and uh, we have more heroes here. You can see the people from our university community who were killed uh, 
during the war because they were fighting for art, because they made this decision to go to the front line to fight for us. Because if not they, who will be? Mm -hmm. Bueno, ahí vimos imágenes del funeral y acá tenemos imágenes de más héroes, miembros de nuestra universidad, de la comunidad, que perdieron la vida en la guerra por nosotros, que tomaron la decisión de ir al frente para dar su vida por nosotros. So, to conclude, I would like to uh, mention that uh, we should understand that we are more united as a whole world that we can think. Y para concluir, eh, debo decir que entendemos que estamos más unidos con el resto del mundo de lo que nos imaginamos. And the potential, our potential as universities and uh, our potential as those who know how to implement service learning uh, projects and our responsibility is to change the world. Y debemos entender el potencial que tenemos como universidades cuando implementamos proyectos de aprendizaje servicio, nuestra responsabilidad que es cambiar el mundo. Today we celebrate, uh, today we celebrate our Independence Day for the 30, uh, it is the second, uh, 30 se uh, second uh, Independence Day. And thankfully, for? thankful for you and for the for whole everything. world we can manage to do it. Bueno, y hoy de hecho celebramos nuestro Día de la Independencia, nuestro trigésimo segundo año de la Independencia. Y eh, gracias a Dios porque todavía podemos celebrar. Here is a small video back to Ukraine. Es un pequeño video de Ucrania. Divided into regions, but shared by one nation. This is our home. That's what we are fighting for. Okay, so I thank you all for, for the attention. Sorry for taking too much time. And uh, I beg you uh, for, uh, for your prayers. I beg all the community to talk uh, to your governments to still support Ukraine without, because without you will not survive. I beg you for prayers, definitely. But I beg you for the weapon as well. Without the weapon, will not manage to stop it. But at the same time, all of us, we should work on the inner world of our students for not ever again. Mm -hmm. Bueno, gracias a todos por su tiempo, perdón por haberme extendido demasiado, pero eh, les ruego a todos para que recen por nosotros, que hablen con sus gobiernos para que sigan apoyando a Ucrania, así que principalmente oren por nosotros. Eh, también armas es lo que necesitamos para seguir adelante en esta guerra. Pero bueno, que trabajemos todos juntos y dando mucha importancia al rol fundamental que tienen los estudiantes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hablando con la gente de la universidad, ellos nos comentaban que la guerra los había llevado a convertir la universidad en un gran proyecto de aprendizaje servicio, porque era la manera de que a través de la educación pudieran formar a los futuros líderes que reconstruyeron Ucrania. For us, it is an honor to join through the university um, uh, these people and for you who are more interested to 
know how we can uh, join and share this experience in the meeting of uh, SDGs tomorrow. In order to conclude, I would like to introduce the next speaker, the consultant of programs in regional Asia, in Asia during 1818-2022, who worked in different educational institutions of India he is member of the Council of Unicervitati of the Program for Catholic Superior Education. And this is where service learning is promoted uh, from India as well. Mercy, we give you the floor. Thank you for this opportunity given to me. I think after this very emotional presentation, nothing else that we could do as educators we could only deeply commit ourselves for serving our students as service learning educators, I believe. And as she was presenting, I was thinking, the moments of deeper need becomes the mother of innovation. Because the way the different disciplines were able to integrate their academic knowledge to the community in the midst of deep war, and we all do community service, not being the victims of the war. But, oh, oh I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> because I became quite emotional. But uh, they being the victims of war by themselves, I was wondering how come they are really motivated, how come they are really inspired and driven through the service integrating their academic knowledge, like social work students, journalism students, IT students. They wouldn't have really thought about it. I think this is a big challenge. What we have learned today, ample of opportunities are available for us to serve the community. Bueno, gracias por la oportunidad. Qué difícil hablar después de una presentación tan emotiva, ¿no? Pero no podemos hacer nada más como educadores que comprometernos plenamente con el aprendizaje y servicio. Vemos que los momentos de necesidad son la madre de la innovación. Vimos cómo diferentes disciplinas se fueron combinando, en este caso, en el momento de la guerra. Eh, todos eh, podemos hacer, el, eh, hacer eso. Y vemos cómo las víctimas de la guerra se vieron motivadas e inspiradas y cómo fueron combinando distintas disciplinas. Vimos estudiantes de trabajo social, de informática, de periodismo, cómo hicieron frente a esos eh, desafíos y aprovecharon esas grandes oportunidades. Uh, even in the previous session, we saw that service learning is to do with the three H, head, heart, and hand. And that's exactly what we have seen in all these presentations, like especially the Ukrainian service learning programs too, how the academic competence of the students is enhanced and how they have developed their own skills and how they have really changed in their own attitude. Not only they, they have also touched us too in our own outlook, in our own uh, perception of life itself. So I think service learning is a very powerful instrument through which we, we are able to uh, touch the community and everyone who is involved with the community. Eh, vimos en todas las presentaciones, en los distintos proyectos, cómo el aprendizaje servicio implica esas tres, esos tres elementos que conocemos, ¿no? la cabeza, el corazón y las manos. Especialmente lo vimos en el caso de Ucrania. Y vimos también cómo se van mejorando las competencias académicas de los alumnos y cómo van cambiando las actitudes en nosotros también, cómo esto fue cambiando nuestra percepción de la vida. Así que el aprendizaje de servicio es realmente muy poderoso como una forma de llegar a esas comunidades de las que formamos parte. With regard to the other presentations too, I could see that the students were able to really improve the quality of life of the community wherein they were working. And also it had a component of how the leftover communities have been included. Inclusiveness also comes in. Mm -hmm. So ultimate, yes. 
en las otras presentaciones también vimos cómo los estudiantes lograban mejorar la calidad de vida de las comunidades, cómo esas comunidades que quedaban eh, alejadas, eh, abandonadas, eh, se volvían comunidades más inclusivas, la inclusividad es algo clave. Especially the students of uh, technology, like design, thing, uh, design um, structures, like textile designing, architecture, and uh, uh, even the others who were involved with the prisoners, the kind of work, and the students who were involved with the enhancement of self-esteem of the uh, kids who were deprived of. So in all these cases, we could see um, like how the students are involved in service learning they are prepared for their livelihood as well as for life. Because as higher education institutions, we are not equipping them only for getting a job, a livelihood alone, but it is also for life. And that could be achieved through a kind of a structured reflection of their community experience. Eh, vimos en las diferentes presentaciones cómo los alumnos de diferentes eh, disciplinas tecnológicas, de diseño, textiles, arquitectura, los trabajos que hacían con los eh, detenidos, los prisioneros, los trabajos también para mejorar la autoestima de los, de los niños, de los jóvenes, cómo todos esos estudiantes participan en el aprendizaje y servicio, que no solo les da una forma de, no les da solo un modo de subsistencia, sino también los cambia para la vida, no solamente para que consigan un trabajo, sino que también los prepara para la vida, a través del de aprendizaje y servicio que requiere una reflexión estructurada. Uh, Sometime back I was talking to a student from a technical institution. Uh, she was telling me, Though she has an engineering degree, she doesn't want to get into a corporate for a job because she said the values that I see there is something that's contrary to my own convictions and belief and therefore I do not want to. But what we could hear today, there are lots of technical students who were involved in such service learning programs. I'm sure that will transform them, not just being the technocrats, they becoming value-based technocrats. I think that is what the technical institutions or the educational institutions we need to do. Mm -hmm. eh, de hecho, estaba hablando con una estudiante de una carrera muy técnica, es ingeniera, de hecho, y ella me decía que no quería, no le interesaba entrar a trabajar en una empresa porque los valores de, la empre de las empresas iban en contra de sus propias convicciones, así que no quería hacer eso. Pero vimos acá en las presentaciones como alumnos de carreras muy técnicas abrazan el aprendizaje servicio y esto los transforma para que sean no solo tecnócratas, sino tecnócratas basados en valores. So thank you very much to all the presenters for the impactful learning that we had during the past few minutes. I think we'll continue to reflect on the learning that we had this morning so that we will accomplish the mission for which we are called as service learning educators. Thank you. Bueno. Muchas gracias. Realmente hoy hemos aprendido mucho y vamos a seguir reflexionando sobre todas estas experiencias para lograr los objetivos que tenemos como educadores. Muchas gracias.